So before we embark on algebraic fractions, we really must make sure that we understand how fractions work. And we start learning about fractions back in upper primary school and lower secondary school. And by this point, um, we're just following sets of rote steps and we're not really thinking carefully about what we're doing. And it's really important that you actually understand what's happening in those steps so that when it becomes algebraic, you can be confident that what you're doing is still okay. Everything we know about fractions to date still applies. We're not changing anything that you've already learnt. All the things you know about fractions, if you know them well, are going to feed into you being able to work with algebraic fractions. But it's important that you do, we take a moment to stop and think about what is it that we actually know about fractions and how they work. So a fraction is made up of three parts, a numerator, a denominator, and the line in between, which is called the vinculum. And all the line represents is division. A fraction is simply a division. This is A divided by B. A fraction in which the numerator is smaller than, than the denominator is called a proper fraction and when the numerator is larger than the denominator that is referred to as an improper fraction. An improper fraction may also be written as a mixed number. So 7 thirds is an improper fraction because 7 is larger than 3 and we can write 7 thirds as 2 and 1 third. That's its mixed number equivalent. Um, now I want to be clear about the fact that a mixed number isn't more simple than a, an improper fraction. So when you're expected to give your answer in simplest form, that doesn't mean that you must write it as a mixed number. In fact, I'd encourage you not to take that extra step to write it as a mixed number. You might make a mistake and take the answer that you already had correct and turn it into something that isn't correct. And it's a completely unnecessary step. Now the other reason I'm hesitant about mixed numbers is that they're really problematic when we start to combine them together with algebra. In a mixed number, the where we've two and one third, there's a symbol missing between the two and one third and actually that symbol missing is addition. When we talk about two and one third as a mixed number we mean two plus one third. In algebra when we omit the symbol, for example two x, we mean multiplication, two times x. So when we put these two things together that's quite problematic. So if you think about if we had two and one thirds x, if we wanted to do seven thirds x, uh, and we had it written as a mixed number. What we really mean when we write that is 2 and 1 thirds multiplied by x. But if we put in all of the missing symbols, 2 and 1 thirds is 2 plus 1 thirds, 1 third, and we're multiplying that by x. And then if we think, well, hang on, my order of operations, I know that multiplication needs to happen before addition. So if, I'm, if I've got 2 and 1 thirds x, which means 2 plus a third multiplied by x, doesn't that really mean a third multiplied by x and then add 2, which is not my intention at all. I want to do 2 plus a third and multiply that by x. So combining the two together is problematic and uh, we can avoid this by just not using mixed numbers. Stick to improper fractions, they will get you everywhere. Similarly, when we're trying to add fractions and multiply fractions and subtract them and divide them, dealing with improper fractions is a much, much easier way to go. So always convert things to improper fractions uh, and then go from there. So simplifying fractions, that's something we've been doing for a long, long time now and it's something that you do by rote without really thinking what you're doing. And in some cases that gets you to the right answer and in some cases that might lead you astray. And this is going to become particularly problematic in algebraic fractions if you don't if you're not careful to think about what it is that you're actually allowed to do to a fraction in simplifying it. So I think we'd all agree that 8 thirds is a fraction in simplest form. When we're looking to simplify a fraction we're looking for common factors between the numerator and denominator and if there are common factors then we can divide both the numerator and denominator by that common factor to simplify. So 8 thirds, 8 and 3 don't have common factors, that's simplified as it is, we would leave it. We could write it as an improper fraction, but that wouldn't be any more simple. It would just be a different way of writing it. 8 quarters on the other hand, well 8 and 4, they have common factors, a common factor of 4. So if we can divide both the numerator by 4 and the denominator by 4 to find that 8 quarters is the same as 2 over 1, which is 2. Similarly, just an understanding of, division, of a fraction as division allows us to work out that 8 divided by 4 is 2. If we have 8 sixths, 8 and 6 have a common factor of 2, so we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2 to find that 8 sixths is equivalent to 4 thirds. 
So we're allowed to multiply and divide numerators and denominators by the same thing. And di particularly division of the numerator and denominator by the same thing is what allows us to simplify. And as I said before, we're looking for common factors. So if I'm faced with 324 over 72, I don't know what the highest common factor between those two numbers is, but I don't need to. I just need to be able to identify a common factor. So I can tell that they're both even numbers, so I should be able to divide them both by 2. So I do that. Divide numerator and denominator by 2, I get 162 on 36. And they're still both even, so I'll divide by 2 again. I get 81 on 18. And now I'm down to smaller numbers where I am able to identify that 81 and 18 have a common factor of 9. And so dividing both the numerator and denominator by 9, I get to 9 over 2, which is in simplest form since there are no further common factors apart from 1 between 9 and 2. So dividing both numerator and denominator by the same thing allows us to create what we call equivalent fractions. We've got four different fractions here. They all have the same numerical value. We're also allowed to multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing. Again, we create equivalent fractions by doing that. But really, that's all we're allowed to do to a fraction while still keeping it, um, whilst not changing its value. So we can multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, or we can divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing. Now the next slide's going to seem very obvious. I think you'd all agree that 32 over 17 isn't the same as 30 over 15. 30 over 15 is 2. That's not the same as 32 over 17. But again, this is about not sort of having this loose idea that as long as I do the same thing to the numerator and denominator, I'll be okay. It's only about multiplying and dividing. Here, we've taken away 2 from both numerator and denominator. And someone might say, well, that's okay, I did the same thing, that should be fine. And here in this example, numerically, you will all tell me that that's not okay, you can't do that, that's not allowed, they're not the same value, they don't have the same value. But all of a sudden, when we've got an algebraic expression, you've got x plus 2 over 2, you're going to want to take away 2 from both top and bottom there. And that won't be okay. Um, it's not okay with numeric fractions, it's not okay with algebraic fractions. The rules are the same, which is why it's important that we understand what we're doing here. Similarly, the second example, we've added 3 to both numerator and denominator. Those are clearly not the same fraction, they don't have the same value, um, and so that is not an okay thing to do when dealing with fractions. The other thing to consider is when a fraction has um, more than one term in the numerator and denominator. And this doesn't come up in numeric fractions because we can, we can we just add those together and we won't have two terms there. But in algebra, we're not going to be able to do that. We'll have things like x plus 5 over x minus 4. Um, and we need to be, again, thinking clearly about what's okay and what isn't okay. So think about 78 over 46. Well, well that's 78 is the same as 70 plus 8, and 46 is the same as 40 plus 6. And then I might think, oh, hang on, 8 and 6, I can simplify those. They're both divisible by 2. I can, they've both got a common factor of 2. Um, and so I could simplify those down to 4 over 3. And so actually, I find that 78 over 46 is the same as 74 over 43. Now again, you'll all tell me that that's not the same, it's not okay to do that, but this is where I want you to be really conscious of these rules and, and conscious of what is okay and what isn't okay, so that when we get to algebra and algebraic fractions, that you're not tempted to do things that we're not allowed. Really, all that we're allowed to do is multiply and divide the entire numerator and the entire denominator by the same thing. Here we've divided both numerator and denominator by 2, but we haven't divided the whole numerator and the whole denominator by 2. We've just picked out part of it. Um, so you must do the same thing to the entire numerator and the entire denominator, and that same thing has to be only multiplication or division. So simplifying fractions, multiplying and dividing numerator and denominator by the same amount. Okay, so we move on to addition and subtraction of fractions. We can only add and subtract like objects. So when adding and subtracting fractions, um, we need to make them like. And we've talked about like objects, we've seen this lots of times. We, can, we know we can only add and subtract like thirds. We can only add and subtract like algebraic terms. Um, so we can make fractions like by ensuring that they have the same denominator. So to add and subtract subtract fractions, we first need to write them with a common denominator. So for example, one quarter plus two thirds. Uh, quarters and thirds are not like. If I've got one quarter and two thirds, I can't add them together because I'm adding different things. 
So I need to identify the lowest common multiple of 4 and 3, which in this case is 12, rewrite both fractions with that lowest common multiple as the denominator. So 1 quarter, we've multiplied the denominator by 3, so we've done the same to the numerator. 2 thirds, we've multiplied that denominator by 4, and so we've done the same to that numerator. And now we have like terms. We've got 3 twelfths plus 8 twelfths, so we should be able to add together our twelfths. If we've got 3 twelfths and 8 twelfths, all together we're going to end up with 11 twelfths. So to add and subtract fractions, we must first rewrite them with a common denominator so that the like terms can then be added and subtracted. Multiplication and division of fractions is more flexible. We don't need like terms and common denominators, and that's basically because a fraction is a division, and multiplication and division happen at the same point in the order of operations, so we're more flexible about how we can um, manipulate fractions when we're multiplying and dividing. So 3 quarters multiplied by 2 fifths, well, 3 quarters, that's just 3 divided by 4, and we're multiplying that by 2 divided by 5. And so we've got an expression here that's only got division and multiplication in it. So the brackets are irrelevant, because all those things can happen in any order. They're at the same point in the order of operations, which means that then I can shuffle them around. So I could do 3 times 2 divided by 4 divided by 5. Now, if I'm going to take something and divide it by 4 and then divide it by 5, that's the same as me dividing it by 4 times 5 which in this case means I'm dividing by 20. So I've got 3 times 2 divided by 4 times 5, which is 6 over 20. I must always make sure that my fractions are in simplest form, so 3 over 10. So we can simplify fractions simply by multiplying the numerators together and multiplying the denominators together. No common denominator is required. Multiplying a fraction by a whole number is not a different process, as long as you understand that every whole number is in fact a fraction. So if I'm trying to do 3 sevenths multiplied by 5, well 5 is just 5 over 1. So 3 sevenths times 5 over 1, multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators, is 15 over 7. If you attempt to multiply 3 sevenths by 5 by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 5, then you have to understand that you haven't actually changed the value of the fraction. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, you haven't done anything to it at all. So if I've got 3 sevenths times 5, a really common error is to want to multiply 3 by 5 and also multiply 7 by 5. But in doing that, and hence getting 15 35ths, which is still 3 sevenths, I haven't changed the value of it. And that's because when I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 5, all I did was multiply by 1. I didn't multiply by 5. So multiplying by a whole number, you want to write it as 5 over 1 or 6 over 1 or whatever you're multiplying by, and then continue along with the multiplication. So division by fractions. Let's first think about division. If I'm doing 7 divided by 3, what I'm trying to do is find 1 third of 7. So dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. And we know how to multiply fractions, and we get 7 thirds. Similarly, 2 thirds divided by 5. Dividing something by 5 is the same as working out what is 1 fifth of it, multiplying it by 1 fifth. We know how to multiply fractions, we get 2 fifteenths. So we see that dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by a third, and dividing by 5 is the same as multiplying by 1 fifth. And actually what we're finding here is that division is the same when we're dealing with fractions, the equivalent, a division can also always be written as a multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal is when we swap the numerator and the denominator. So 6 divided by a half, that's the same as 6 multiplied by 2 over 1. So 6 multiplied by 2, which is 12. 7 over 2 divided by 1 fifth, well, that's the same as 7 over, sorry, 2 over 7 divided by 1 fifth, that's the same as 2 over 7 multiplied by 5 over 1. 10 over 7. So to divide by a fraction, you simply multiply by its reciprocal, where the reciprocal is found by swapping the numerator and the denominator of the fraction. So we have a summary here that's printed in your notes also. We're, um, evaluating Equivalent fractions are found by multiplying or dividing the numerator by the same amount. Simplifying fractions, we're looking for common factors and we're dividing both the numerator and denominator. Adding and subtracting fractions, we need like terms, we need common denominator. Multiplying fractions, we simply multiply numerators and multiply denominators. Dividing by fractions, we want to change it into a multiplication by using the reciprocal. 
Now over to you. Have a go at exercise 1A. Uh, in the questions are provided in your booklet and there's space to answer those questions there also. All the best.